Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Starbet, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poof, there goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? Now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular Broadway columnist, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And on my left, that charming, distinguished, and humorous quizzer, Mr. Fred Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Dorothy. I'll never live up to it. <laughs> and on my left, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a young lady who told me that it's, it's so cold tonight that she knows a 32nd degree mason who has gone down 10 degrees just tonight. <laughs> <laughs> P.S. Miss Arlene Francis. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. It's true, too. <laughs> and on my left, the... Lovable publisher, columnist, and wanderer, Bennett Cerf. <laughs> um, on my left, we have a very unusual man. He's not only a great news analyst and panel moderator, but he is the world's greatest living authority on worms, Mr. John Charles <laughs> Daly. Thank you, Bennett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. You've all heard about the worm turning. It appears I've got him spinning like tops. You remember last week I took a wild guess after we horsed around with worms for a while that they were larvae. Well, I've got here a very learned document that says they're not. They represent an early stage in the metamorphosis of the diptera, the hymenoptera, the coleoptera, and the lepidoptera, and others. In some cases, they are worm-like, but they are not worms. Worms, of which there are thousands of species, are invertebrates falling under the Latin term vermes, and they're called annelids. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> no wonder we didn't get it. <laughs> and a man from the Encyclopedia Britannica in Canada bears this out. He says that uh, the ones we were talking about were fish bait, and they're classified as belonging to the annelida group. But a certified public accountant figured it all out. He says that there are no common characteristics that can be noted beyond the general occurrence of lateral symmetry, well, <coughs> that's all. Let what, about spin. The, uh, what about the Baldwin worms and the apples that we have? <laughs> oh, not again. Well, I've really got enough trouble last week. <laughs> well, I think we ought to get down to what we're really here to do, which is to see if we can't tie up uh, our panel in some knots. And uh, we have some people with very interesting occupations to try and do it. We'll have a famous guest challenger a bit later on. But I think it's time the experts met our first challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Perla Fenton Barcinas? Yes. Perla Fenton Barcinas. <laughs> um, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Barcinas. You know nothing about worms. <laughs> you do know something about worms. Well, that's nice. Because I don't know anything about worms. <laughs> I found that out. Uh, where are you from, ma'am? I'm from Acapulco, Mexico. You're lucky. That's a lovely country. Well, uh, actually, these four folks over here are neighbors of uh, mine from New York, but they'd probably all like to be in Acapulco, and the next best thing is to get a chance to know you a little better. So will you take a hike down there, please? Miss Barcelona, is Hello. How is Mayor O'Dwyer? Have you seen her? Mr. Martinez, would you come over here, please, and get down next to me? <laughs> now, I don't know whether you know what happens now, but since the panel has had a chance to meet you, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's on the Mexican panel of What's My Line. The Mexican <laughs> panel of What's My Line, Mr. Allen. I think she's a tortilla inspector at a Mexican <laughs> Howard Johnson's. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she teaches water skiing. Mr. Sir. Well, I think Acapulco is full of American tourists, and I think Miss Barsin is probably guides them more, takes them around some way. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Perla Fenton Basinas, and at the same time, we will tell them what her line is, but the panel is going to have to dig to figure out what it is. All right, 
Mrs. Bocinas. You know how we score this operation? If you can give them a no answer, I'll flip a card, and when I've flipped ten of these cards, you've beaten them. All set? All right. All right. Uh, Mrs. Bacinas is self-employed. With that, I uh, suppose we begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Bacinas, do you deal in services? Yes. And uh, may both men and women avail themselves of your yes. services? Uh, do they enjoy it? Yes. Is it something that might come under the classification of uh, uh, amusement or entertainment? No. A uh, small conference, terribly sorry. <laughs> Starting early tonight, John. Tell him in Spanish, Mrs. Barcenas. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's telling her. <laughs> Looks like blind date from yes, here. <laughs> we uh, have had a meeting of the committee here, and we've decided, Miss Dorothy, we'll give you a yes to that last one. What was it? Whether it's... <laughs> Well, that's a very good question. It, whether it oh. came under the heading of amusement and entertainment, mm -hmm. we think that uh, what Mrs. Basilis In other Basinas words, uh, uh, Mrs. Basilis, you are in um, a luxury uh, form of uh, work. I, I, what you do is not a necessity of life. Yes. Uh, do you meet a great many people in your work? Yes. Do you do your work standing up? Yes. Uh, do you have anything to do with anything that is consumed, such as, as food or drink? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Is there a product involved in what you do? No. Two Miss down and eight to go, Miss Francis. I'd Would make a sp good spot announcer, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider yourself a performer in any way, Mrs. Barcenas? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Surf. Mrs. Barcenas, do you have something to do with the tourists and visitors who come down to Acapulco? Yes. Do you, do you show them something? Yes. You do? Uh, well, most of Acapulco... <laughs> Actually, Bennett, I would say this, that um, showing something would be considered an ultimate objective of the tasks which Mrs. Bersinas performs. I'm correct in, in surmising that what you show them is not yourself. It's something else. <laughs> uh, Acapulco is on the water. Has what you have to do... Do you do have anything to do with the water at all? Yes. Uh, do you wear some kind of special costume, bathing suit, or some watery no. costume? You do not. No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you own anything that is on or near the water? Yes. And people uh, somehow connect with this through your efforts? Is that mm -hmm. it? Uh, is it a, uh, a place of relaxation? No. Oh, my, this is when I wish what I was What is it doing in, in Acapulco? What? Well, actually, I would say this, uh, Dorothy, that almost anything that you might do in Acapulco that was connected with tourists might be considered relaxing. To that degree, if Mrs. Um, Barcinas is willing, we will change... Yes, anything like that is relaxing, no? Okay. Okay. Well, is it, uh, is it something on the water? Or in the water? On the water or in the water? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Is it a craft? Yeah. Uh, do you uh, operate some type of boat? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, can we have a conference? I have a... I have a oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Can we have a conference, please, John? Ben you may have ten seconds, uh, yes. Dorothy, they're down in Acapulco. They've got a lot of glass-bottom boats. Oh. How well, I'll try that. Is it a glass-bottom boat that you have? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Mrs. Bazinas wanted to know what she could do now. I've got a small definition of a worm here. Would you like to try to read that? <laughs> and there's Mr. Irwin C. Abbott, certified public accountant. You can read that one if you want to. I don't know. I've, I've got to go home and get my glasses. <laughs> the main thing, I think... Yes, Fred. I know a fellow down in Alcapulco who has a bifocal uh, glass bottom boat. <laughs> In a prescription bottle. Don't wear their glasses, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what the weather predictions are in Acapulco? Cold today, hot tomorrow. Oh. 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 <laughs> now, actually, Mrs. Barcinas is captain of a glass bottom boat. And she stands up all the time? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yes, oh, the wheel. Chic. 
Yes. I'll I have share. to tell the tourists all about the Acapulco and the biz tanning. If you don't see much of Acapulco, throw a glass bottom and bolt, do you? <laughs> you see a lot of things. Do you really? Sure you see. <laughs> I think that the explanation of what can be seen in Acapulco gets the rest of the cards over, yeah. and you get our thanks for being a very fine guest. So that's my life. Well, panel, a very fine beginning. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, sir? Just sign in right there uh, on the blackboard. David. David Bennett. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Where are you from, sir? Peru, Illinois. Peru, Illinois. That's right. Peru, Illinois. Oh, yes. It's about, <laughs> it's about where? It's about 100 miles southwest of Chicago. Well, it's exactly uh, 15 feet over there. Do you think you can make that 15? Yeah. Thanks I, very I much. I was in Lima last night. Is that anywhere near Peru? <laughs> Hello. I've never been in Peru. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll make it either. All right, Mr. <laughs> Bennett, over here, if you will, and sit down next to me, please. <laughs> and uh, we'll give the panel, as is our custom, one chance to take this right out of the blue somewhere. We'll begin the wild guesses, as we call them, with Miss Kilgallen. I think Mr. Bennett is the mayor of Peru. The mayor of Peru, Mr. Allen. I think he's the chief of police from Peru. Miss Benson. Assuming they have police. I think he's a wheat farmer. A wheat farmer, <laughs> Mr. Serf. He's an Inca maker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Bennett. Perhaps that'll help them to make up their minds in the next few seconds. Because right now we'll tell our viewers at home exactly what your line is, but the panel's going to have to do some digging. <laughs> and you come in a bit closer, please. All right, Mr. Bennett, uh, you all set. You know how we score. Yes, sir. All set, huh? All right, Mr. Bennett is salaried. And let's begin the general questioning with Bennett, sir. Well, Mr. Bennett, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is it a useful product? Yes. Uh, can it be used by both sexes? Yes. By human beings, I mean? Yes. <laughs> Would it be used in the home? Yes. Uh, well, we usually divide the home up. If, if, uh, if you were in a two-story house, would you be likely to find this product on the second floor? More likely. Could it be found in the bedroom? Yes. Uh, would it have anything to do with sleeping paraphernalia? Yes. Would it be found in, on, or under a bed? <laughs> <laughs> in, on, or under a bed? In Peru, I would say. No. 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 <laughs> One out of nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. It has to do with sleeping? But it has to do with sleeping paraphernalia in a general sense. Uh, actually, I would almost assume that the vast quantity of objects in a bedroom would have some connection with the paraphernalia of sleep. No, there are... There are <coughs> books in a bedroom, they don't make you sleep. Might put you to sleep. But you Not Random House. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. John, I'd just like to get a definition. I don't really want to ask a question here and get myself into double trouble, but do you consider everything in a bedroom sleeping paraphernalia? No, I consider anything in a bedroom which is part of the planned operation of retiring, sleeping, and arising a part of the paraphernalia <coughs> of a bedroom. Uh-huh. Um, well, I can only think of one thing that wouldn't be on or under or on top of or inside the bed that would be There's part Ms. of... <laughs> hmm? Mr. Bennett all the time, you know. <laughs> uh, would this be found on or near the bedside table? Yes. Does it go tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock? Is it what? I'm sorry. Does it go tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock? And... <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Is it an alarm clock? The Arno do you have something to do with alarm clocks? It's something to do with alarm clocks, but what? He tests them. Tests alarm oh. clocks. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Ah, uh, he makes the little bells that they hide in the clock. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. He manufactures them. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. He sells them. Sells them, it's right. <laughs> Mr. 
This is one of those men, you know, who has got Big Ben with him all the time. The Big Ben that's not in the Parliament. The, was it West Clarks, isn't it? That's Big Ben, West Clarks. And actually, it shows you what a small world it is. Mr. Bennett is leaving tomorrow for South Africa, from whence I came so many years ago. Uh, and he's going to go around the world. In the you're going to find out what weeks. made John Daly tick? Well, if John Daly has any friends there, I'll gladly, I'll gladly look them up. Well, fine. If you <coughs> find any friends of mine, do. Well, that's... <laughs> It's very Thank nice to have had you with us, sir, and watch my line. Good night. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest, but first, here's Arlene Gray for Stop It. Do you know how many deodorants there are on the market? Could you guess? Ten, maybe? Twenty? Fifty? There are more than one hundred. Yes, by actual count, you have more than 100 deodorant products to choose from for your own personal use. So why should you choose Stopette? Here's why. Because Stopette is the one and only lotion spray deodorant. And what is a lotion spray deodorant? Stopette, the lotion spray deodorant, contains soothing, smoothing ingredients that cannot irritate normal skin. That means you can use Stopette day after day after day, all year round with absolute assurance. And that's only one of the assurances Stopette gives you. Another is in the Stopette formula itself. The famous original spray deodorant formula created by Dr. Jules Montagnier. No words and no claims can change these two facts. One, there is no more effective deodorant formula than Stopette. And two, there is no more effective antiperspirant action than Stopettes. How many deodorants did I say were on the market? Over a hundred? I take it back. There's only one. Stopette, the lotion spray deodorant. Drug and cosmetic counters all over the country are now featuring this special Stopette combination. This 47-day trial size Stopette free with your purchase of regular Stopet. For new Stopet users, it's a wonderful way to get acquainted with America's favorite spray deodorant. For you old friends of Stopet, it's a generous bonus offer you won't want to miss. Look for the Stopet package that gives you the 47 day trial size bottle absolutely free at your favorite drug or cosmetic counter now. And now we come to the special feature of our program the appearance of our mystery celebrity which is a part of the program that uh, we trust will prove the perceptive talents of a panel which can't see what's going on. Because as most of you know, our experts are blindfolded. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Dan. good. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? join me over here, the panel knows that for this particular part of the program, we dispense with everything except the general questioning, which we will begin with um, Fred Allen. Uh, I know from the applause that it's not President Eisenhower. <laughs> Are you uh, in the, uh, uh, I know that you're fairly well known by the reception. Are you uh, in the entertainment field? Well, I always try to be entertaining. <laughs> Are you a... We haven't got a, a worm as a mystery guest. <laughs> Are you a, uh, a member of the opposite sex? Opposite from what? <laughs> well, from me, for example. I think so. <laughs> I, uh... Are that you... would be yes, Fred. Yes, uh, you're a, a, a lady uh, performer, entertainer. Do you work in the pictures? Yes, I do. Do you... Uh, I know this isn't Miss Garbo having a night out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be alone by any chance. I... Fred, I'm very sensitive. Please don't make remarks like that. <laughs> well, John, I can't see what I'm doing. You have to excuse my predicament here. 
I can't uh, think in Braille, fortunately. <laughs> but uh, are you, uh, do you appear in the theater, too? Yes, I have. Do you uh, uh, appear on television apart from this show tonight? Yes. You, do you have a regular uh, television program? No, I do not. One Congratulations. Down. <laughs> <laughs> One down, nine to go, Miss Francis. Are you known predominantly for your work in pictures? Yes. Would you be considered a leading woman? <laughs> What's the matter? I have one! <laughs> John? <laughs> That's her alter ego. But you would be a leading woman? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, uh, uh, would you be in pictures uh, for only the last, let's say, ten years or five years? Yes. Uh, do you work for any particular company in pictures? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, you have a very sultry-sounding voice, even when it's disguised. Do you ever play sultry parts on the screen? Yes. Did you ever play a part in a picture originally written by Theodore Dreiser in which you were thrown out of a boat? Well, come I down. don't hear any answers. Yes. yes. <laughs> don't you remember? We are a little bit concerned with technicalities, perhaps, but will you repeat the question, Betty? In which it was uh, There was a was book somebody... called An American Tragedy by Theodore Dreiser. The picture had another name. And it laid this lady, if she's the lady I think she may be, was in it. That should be easy to answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we had to get her up out of the water. I see. And are you now about to appear in the water again in, in a television show based on Claire Booth Luce's The Women? Yes. <laughs> and would your name be appropriate for this time of year, Miss Shelley Winters? Right, Bennett. <laughs> I would say that Miss Winters is um, one of remarkable courage because she's got the women coming up and she was driving that voice down and if she doesn't have a little hoarseness tomorrow, it'll be a, a great surprise. <laughs> Is what? it tomorrow? No, no, no. Oh, no. Well, I just no, mean we... the hoarseness tomorrow. Oh. The woman is coming a bit later, but... What about that bathtub scene? That's the one you're going to do, aren't Yes, you? in the water again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, very, <laughs> I, I'm very sorry I didn't get all the way to Miss Kil Kilgallen. I, I uh, had a special effect sounding for... <laughs> to well, let's hear it now. No! Oh, come on, let's hear it now. Let's, oh, let's hear uh, the effect. Well, I was going to sing. Well, let's I, I've been, I, I was hoping you were going to say, oh, do you do other things in the, in the uh, show business? And I was going to do, and all because of the man that got away. Just enough time to test your nerve, and let's see what you can do with one more challenge. Will you come in and sign in, please, sir? And will you sign in firmly, strongly, and rapidly? Jean? Lapiseri, is that right, sir? Thank you. Will you uh, tell us first where you're from? East Meadow, New York. East Meadow, New York. Will you look at the panel? panel well. to look at Mr. Lapiseri. You'll come with me, and on this one, actually, we'll even dispense with the wild guesses. If you'll sit down, uh, the panel can take a quick look at you, and in that time, we will tell our viewers at home what your line is, but we'll put the panel right to work to see what they can do with general questioning. So let's see, let the viewers at home know what uh, you do, but uh, the panel's very good. Will you come in closer? All right, do you know how we score this operation, yes, do. do you, Mr. Lapiseri? Yes, is salary? Let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. And panel, you're going to have about two minutes to do this in. Mr. Lapiseri, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. One down no. and nine. I'm in your oh, class. Mr. Sir. Uh, do you, have you got some kind of a governmental position? No. 
Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. And the explanation there is it is not basically a governmental position, even though he works for a nonprofit organization. Miss Kilgallen. I don't get that at all. You mean he doesn't work for a government, is that correct? No, the issue was do you have a governmental oh. position, which he does not, in other words, function in the field of government mm -hmm. per se. No. Do you work for a branch of a government? I will say no. No, it is not a branch. Well, I mean, did he get his paycheck from a government? That's fine. That settles the whole okay. thing. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Does he work in some sort of an institution? <laughs> no. Oh, four down and six to I'm go, Mr. Allen. looking President. at him, I mean, I... Do you work for a certain individual? You mean directly? Has he got an immediate superior? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's well, we all have cases <coughs> on the function that basically everyone has an immediate superior oh, to Oh, I whom... thought you stood alone, John. Thank you very much. <laughs> what about Mrs. Daly? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, is the, whoever you work for uh, connected with the, go with the government of whatever country he or she is associated with? Something like that. I'll say no to that. I think you better. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, but I think we've got... That's five down and five you, to go. We've got time for one question, I think. Well, uh, have you got anything to do with the United Nations? Yes. That's not a government? No. Those people a... don't represent governments? No, it's, it's not a government by itself. Bennett, I'm afraid we're going to throw the towel in because of time, but Bennett, I think, would have taken you down the road which might have fundamentally and ultimately told you that Mr. Lapiseri is the head chef at the United Nations. That was the tricky part about it. Thank you for being our guest. I'm sorry we didn't have more time. And all of this money is going to the March of Dimes by Mr. Lapiteri himself. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you in it, sir. We'll be back in just a moment. But first, here's a further word from Arlene Gray. This is the new stop at Cream Deodorant and Antiperspirant. And it comes in a new swivel case that works just like a lipstick. This is a new twist in deodorants. And it means no stubborn jars, no gooey fingers, no waste. Nothing to wash off. Yes, Stop Ed Cream Deodorant is wonderfully convenient. It's wonderfully effective, too, because unlike many other cream sticks, it's both a deodorant and an antiperspirant. And unlike any other cream stick, it's Stop Ed. The famous formula you know you can trust. Stop Ed Cream Deodorant. Won't you try it? And now, before our panel says goodnight, may I remind you to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when once again, we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And now, a message from our alternate week sponsor, Remington Rand, makers of the Remington 60 Deluxe Electric Shaver. The shaver that's so gentle, it can shave a peach. So rugged, it can shave a brush. Proving that no matter how tender your skin or tough your beard, the Remington's bound to give you a close, comfortable shave. Tomorrow, why don't you reach for the Remington? Get a Remington 60 Deluxe. And now, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. John, good night, Joe. Good night, Fred. Good night, Dorothy. Happy night. Honolulu, Bennett. Good night, Good night, <laughs> Thank you. I won't be back for a month. I hope you'll miss me. Good night, John. We will we'll miss you, and I recommend that. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> Transportation for Mrs. Barsena was arranged through American Airlines. American, now serving more than 77 major cities in the United States, Mexico, and Canada. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. <laughs>